Hello doll friends, this is Michael Kanatis with the Carmel Doll Shop and the Grovian Doll Museum. The time is here. We're on our second monthly series of studying one particular maker. Uh, we really do appreciate your feedback on our last um, series, which was on Jules Nicholas Steiner. And a lot of you gave us great ideas of things to do. Um, and we will do those in the future, so we do appreciate that. But we decided that we wanted to do something that, for instance, that with, with Steiner, it was mostly one specific type of doll, a be the Bebe and, and a few other things, but basically just the Bebe. And then I stopped, started to think, as a collector, I am what you would call an eclectic collector. I like things that are very, very early and very old. I like things that are, uh, you'd be amazed at the things that I like. So then I started to think, what is the one maker that has all the things that I like? Lady dolls, character dolls, baby dolls, early dolls, wax dolls, and then it came to me, my first love, Kessner. So this month, we're going to have the king of doll makers, Kessner, the Kessner Company. Um, how this works is part of the information you will get from our Facebook page. So every day there will be a post, and you'll look at the post, and we'll try to start in chronological order. And then periodically, maybe once a week or twice a week, we will have a video. The video won't always be following the line of um, or the chronological line, it'll have to do with what's available, but it will all be Kessner. So I'm gonna step aside, although we're gonna just talk about one thing today, I'm gonna step aside and give you a little tiny, tiny sliver of the type of products that the Kessner company made, and you will be amazed because it's a lot more diversified than just about any other company. So we're gonna have a little peek. So we have our all bist, our character dolls, our china dolls, wax dolls, paper mache dolls, googly dolls, dolls from far away lands, and who knew, dollhouse furniture. But today I wanna to talk about, and as I said, sometimes this is gonna be out of order, but my whole, um, once I fell into dolls, antique dolls, which is that's really what happened, when I decided that I wanted to collect, the first doll that I bought, that I decided, you know, the, 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 the first first one was just an accidental thing that, and. I wasn't really planning, I didn't even know anything about them. But when I decided to collect the, the first doll that I bought with serious money, um, uh, you know, the first doll I bought was for $300. This one was considerably more. So I wanna show them to you. Uh, if you notice, I didn't have on the table any of the dolls that would call, we would call dolly faces and um, Dolly face dolls to me, uh, usually today when people say dolly face dolls, it's a put down. But to me, I think that they're some of the most beautiful, perfect Victorian children. And I prefer to call them ch child dolls than dolly faces. So this is a Kessner 129. So now we're in, a, in about 1898. Um, as we were preparing this whole program for you, we realized, we went through our archives, and we only had one 129 other than this one in our whole career for sale. So of the, the open mouth children, this is one of the rarest pieces. And what I love about him is the complete originality. I didn't know a thing. I mean, I really didn't know a thing. I didn't have standards of, oh, I'm only gonna collect all original. I just got very, very lucky. Um, and if I didn't buy him from the dealer that I bought him from, 
uh, she was soon going to convert him into a girl, which would have been terrible. Now, I want to talk about one thing about the Kessner Company was founded in 1820, or it was founded earlier than that, but they started producing dolls in 1820. Um, and like many, many great doll making companies, it would be World War II and Nazism that ended it. So they stopped producing in 1938. With the exception of the China head dolls, there is a similarity in all of the materials that are used, whether it's a paper mache, whether it's a uh, bisque head, there's certain products that they use. And I think that that's because of where they re were, were um, ge geographically, the natural materials that they had. The other thing that's very interesting, and David wanted me to emphasize this to all of you, this is a very unique company in that early on, they created everything. So other companies such as Cameron Reinhardt and uh, Dressel and whatnot, heads were made here, eyes were made here, bodies were made here. Kessner is all in house, which is a very smart idea business-wise because you can control it. Um, so they're one of the very, very few, um, maybe Steiff and a couple of others, that did everything in-house for their product. And that's why they were able to hold up their quality. So as I said, we're gonna, we're gonna go in the 1890s. Later on, we'll go back, but this is because this is my first, it has to be your first. So a couple things I wanna point out quality-wise and a lot of people don't realize that it's very difficult to do cut open a mouth and put teeth in. But if you notice his little teeth, and I believe there are five of them, those are each separate pieces of glass. And it's the same glass that would be used to make the eyes. Now, the other thing that's unifying in from the early years meaning the paper machés, there's very little difference between this, which is a paint cover. There's very little difference between this and the material that was used to make the paper mache heads. Uh, the only thing that would be different is the paper mache heads would have some filler like um, straw or, or other things to kind of um, make it stronger. So they must have had a natural supply of basically it's plaster of Paris, plaster of Paris. This would have been used for the pates and it would also be used to cover, the bodies would be made out of uh, wood and, and paper mache, which would be pressed into molds. Then it would be finished off with this material and this would be sanded down and it made it very easy to paint. And that's why a Kessner has a beautiful uh, body, body finish. Now I wanna also talk about quality because I've really never seen a bad quality Kessner doll. It may have bad treatment or been left to uh, disintegrate, but when they made them, they were excellent quality. And this is another 129, so this is the only other one, uh, other one we've had. And I borrowed this from Carmel Doll Shop. But you can see that they're, they're usually marked. Um, the, um, this is marked, uh, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, 129 would be a model style, like a Model T or a Model A. Um, and then they also had their bodies that were marked. Now they're not always marked, sometimes um, it, it didn't happen, but you can see that whenever you see that square, um, uh, cartouche, well it's not a cartouche, but where it says Excelsior, that is the mark for a Kessner body. Now, it is such a problem for a lot of people to get the concept that a Kessner doll head goes on a Kessner body. So if 
this said Simon and Halbig or Heinrich Handwerk or anything else, it would be wrong. Um, there are a lot of different kinds of bodies to study, so this is a great one to, to really spend some time to learn because they changed their product, as you can see from the table. So a, a child doll might have five different types of bodies and different kinds of articulation depending on the size. Now, clothing. Um, they didn't, as far as I know, have a, that is the one thing that they didn't really excel at, which would be dolls with wardrobes and um, they would come in a, a, a basic chemise, which is um, a type of a, an underwear. Um, it was really believed through most of the last century that you dress your dolls at home. Um, the dress doll was really very much a, a, a French thing. So, I mean, this is just a little taste of where we're going with this program. Um, there's a lot to learn, and I, uh, I hope that you are um, pleased by the variety of things that we're gonna show through this next month. So anyways, doll friends, remember to follow us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube, and like and subscribe. Bye-bye, doll friends. <laughs>